For this demonstration, we're going to be working on the dry on dry details. We're going to kind of be working now at the end of our project. We've pretty much finished everything. I've got the door left, the stairs left, and just some <clears throat> dry on dry details. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill up my little water cup here. So I've got clean, fresh water, and I'm going to get some water in my little pallet holes, but I'm not going to put that much in. This time, we're not making a big wash. We're just doing some dry on dry. Okay, so since we're doing dry on dry, I'm really going to be using um, my nylon bristle brushes. Okay, we've already learned the difference between the camel hair and the nylon bristle, that they have a different feel to them, they're used for different things, that our brushes um, have specific purpose and function, right? And so now we're going to be using our nylon bristle, and quite frankly, I'll be using the little one um, to kind of get some. Actually, I'm going to use the big one first to do my door, and then I'll get to the lo other little details. First, I'm going to make a brown. I'm going to cheat a little by using brown. Okay, and then I'm going to um, tone my brown with just a little bit of red. I want a more reddish brown door. Okay, so I'm going to take my red, tone up my brown. So I have a reddish brown door, you can kind of see it there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that there for the moment. I'm just going to paint in my door and my, and my, um, paint my door in and paint my stairs in. Okay, and actually I'm going to want a little bit more brown. It's not, not quite what I want. It's a little too on the light side. And this is the thing too, if you get your washes too light and you don't see them, that's something to work around too. Now of course everything on my painting at this point is dry, right? I don't have any wet areas. The, um, the siding is dry, the windows are dry, everything is dry. Okay so my water is not running into something else. Okay. Okay. Um, now I'm going to just kind of use this same wash here and get a little bit of brown, more brown because I want it to be dark brown for the area right inside here. I'm just going to gently wash in a little bit of brown into these containers, into these areas, because I want them to look different, but I don't want them to be dry and dry. I want them to be a little washy looking. I want them to have a different texture. Um, as I go through though now, I'm going to use um, a little gray. We did learn how to make gray. Okay, and I'm going to use some magenta. I'm going to use my lime green. Now you guys obviously have different kinds of grays that you're making based on whatever um, whatever you've got, right? If you used a different kind of complementary color set than I did, um, you're going to run into a little different colors. Um, and I'm going to use this for my doorknob. Okay, I'm going to take this, dry my doorknob off really well so it doesn't run, and take this and paint my doorknob in this kind of dark gray. Actually, not my doorknob. Sorry, my door. What do you call that? The handle, the door handle, doorknob plate. I don't know what we're going to call it. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that there till it dries, and then I'll paint. A black handle on later. Um, at this point I'm going to start going around to the different parts of my picture and making them um, a little, doing some little dry and dry. I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to work from left to right so I don't go over anything. Here's my dark gray that I just got done making. I'm going to paint in my pinnacles. Oh, 
You want to stay away from just using pure black ever in a painting because it just doesn't look half as good as a mixed up color. Okay, it's just just the benefit of of um, painting and getting better with your painting skills is that um, mixing colors just works way better than anything you could ever hope to do with just a plain black right out of the container. Okay. You can see how I'm just kind of gently running the tip along here to get my color. Okay. And now I'm going to take my larger nylon bristle brush and just do some kind of gentle washing. Just to kind of get some texture and I'm going to pat some of that out so it doesn't look so painted on. Okay, just so we have a little different texture there. Okay, and now I'm going to go up here and do the same thing. Just a little wash over the top of it. Don't want to cover the whole thing. Okay, and sometimes you can even take a little damp paper towel and pat it on just to give a little textured look. Of course, you don't want it to be a wet paper towel. You want it just to be damp. And if you run into a thing where it starts running, you can always get a nice dry paper towel and lift it right out before it dries too much and put anything back in that you've um, had to take out, like this stuff here. Okay, so working with watercolors is definitely um, a putsy proposition. You've got to kind of really be careful about where you go and what you put in and how deep you put it in and if you leave it there or not. Um, like right up here I'm going to go over this with just a little dark thing just to kind of make it look like the inside of the room is a little bit darker on that side. And do the same thing here. Of course I'm not going to follow my lines so that it kind of looks like there's something else going on. Um, I'm going to get a little magenta. And I'm going to use that to do a little dry and dry. Just to draw the eye around. Okay. Um what else? Some other things that I can use to draw the eye around. Um, what was it? Oh yeah, that's it. I'm going to grab some red and make a pretty heavy, heavily colored wash here. I'm going to paint these, these inside boards with the red. Sorry, these are not the inside boards, these are the outside. These are the ones that are resting atop. Kind of making the stripes here. Again, this is all about being careful, going slow, being thoughtful about how you work.
I'm using my pinky to brace my hand so I can be nice and detailed right we want to be nice and detailed otherwise people won't look at it nicely first thing people see is sloppiness they only notice sloppiness they don't notice neatness because neatness is just part of nature right you should be in doing a neat job no matter what whereas sloppiness stands out right there we go Can you go back with this dark gray down here and put the shadows in between the wood in between the siding of this wood here because that's underneath the porch and there's no light underneath the porch to be seen so those would be just dark spaces and now I'm as you can see I'm, I'm resting my hand on my stairs because my stairs are now dry and so what I'm gonna do is just in a second I'm gonna go back and put another layer of dry on dry right under my stairs Okay. Well, I think that about does it for my Victorian gingerbread house. Kind of turned into a gingerbread house here. I'm going to blend this edge down. Anytime you have something that you think you want to get rid of, usually you can lift it out with a paintbrush and a little bit of clean, fresh water. So there you go. Um, at the end, of course, take your your palette and take your extra paper towel and swipe out any of that extra paint and get your whole palette cleaned.